This is Rick from In Front of IT. Welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Docker on Ubuntu. So if you're in the IT industry or you want to get into it, you should definitely know what Docker is. It's a platform that allows you to create applications that run in containers. What's a container? Containers are a slimmed down version of a virtual machine that runs only what's needed to run the application. These days in IT, you see it everywhere. So in this video, I'm going to walk through some quick steps to install Docker on your Ubuntu desktop. So without wasting any more time, let's get in front of it. So the first thing we're going to do is upgrade the system. And this is always recommended before you install any new applications, always bring your Linux operating system up to date with patches, security patches, application updates, what have you, just so you can eliminate that as any type of issue. As you can see on this system, there are 48 packages that need to be upgraded, but let's go ahead and do that. And we'll do that by running the sudo apt upgrade command. And after a few minutes of downloading updated packages and installing them, which I'll conveniently skip through, we're done. Next up, let's go ahead and install the dependencies for Docker. We're going to do that with the app install command and these packages that you see me typing in here. The command and the packages needed will be in the description. Another quick round of installing packages and we're ready for the next step. So we're going to use the make dir command to create a directory where we can store the keys for this repository for Docker. Every type of repository has a key that is used for security purposes to make sure you're downloading packages from the actual true repository and not a fake one. Next step, we're going to use the curl command and the gpg command, as you see me entering in here, to download the gpg key from the Docker website and then processing it using the gpg key and store it in our key rings directory we just created. Without going into too much detail, this next three line command I have here pulls down the repository location and inserts the architecture and the version of the operating system and puts that into a file called docker.list in the app sources list D directory. That will allow apt package manager to be able to pull the Docker packages and keep them updated. And finally, for some real progress, we're going to run another apt update to update the repository database. And then we're going to run apt install and install the Docker components that are needed as shown in the command I'm entering in now. And after another round of installs of the actual Docker components and its dependencies, which I'll conveniently skip through again, we have Docker installed. So we're going to run the sudo docker info command just to verify that it is installed. And as you will see, that will work. You'll get back information. But when you try to run just Docker info, which means you're running it as your normal unprivileged user, you'll get a permission denied error. We're going to fix that next. How do we fix that? By adding ourselves to the Docker user group in the operating system. We do that by running the following command sudo and use your favorite editor nano or vi and you're going to edit the slash etsy groups file you're going to find a line with the word docker in it it should be at the bottom of the file after the second exclamation point you're going to add your username in my case my username is coach after you add that to the file go ahead and save it for that change to take effect we're going to need to log out and log back in so let's go ahead and do that now Logging out and logging back in will allow our group membership to reset and allow our username to be added to the Docker's user group, which we need to be able to run Docker commands without privilege. This is something that you'd want to do on a desktop or development workstation or virtual machine where you're testing, but you wouldn't want to do this in a production environment. All right, let's test if the change worked by running the Docker info command without sudo. So that response means that the change worked. And now we can run Docker commands without sudo. Now we're going to run a simple container to verify that it works. We do this with the docker run command. And the container we're going to run is called hello world. This is just a simple introduction container that verifies your docker installation is working correctly. And if you see this hello from docker message, that means it worked and you have a successful installation of docker. Another useful command is the docker ps command. This will show you running container, or you could run it with the dash A flag, which will show all containers that are currently installed, running or stop. And with that, we have a successful installation of Docker on Ubuntu. Hit the like button if this video helped you out. And subscribe if you'd like to see more videos just like this one.
This is Rick from In Front of IT, signing out.